And in this video, I'm going to talk about the benefits of using heart rate monitors to help you with training for boxing. So, this is my heart rate monitor. This is a Polar HR10. Um, I got it quite recently, to be honest, because I wasn't doing any cardio uh, <laughs> before. But now I am. I'm trying to get back into boxing, and it's a very good tool into tracking fitness and um, and different training systems to train in. So the things that I want to talk about today is finding your anaerobic threshold. How we do that tracking recovery time and tracking calories burnt off in a session. So three things, very general, I would say the most beneficial for your training for boxing. So the first one, funny anaerobic threshold. Anaerobic just means when your body is working without oxygen. So when you do something and you start feeling a burn in your muscles, that is your muscles not getting enough oxygen. And the response to that side effect of that is they start burning, they start producing lactic acid, and that's when you feel a burn in your muscles. So running up a hill, sprinting up a hill, when you start feeling your legs burning, uh, repping out push-ups, things like that. I'll show you an easy way to find your anaerobic threshold. So heart rate monitor on, strap to your chest, that's where it goes. So you wouldn't have a t-shirt on, but there, underneath the t-shirt. So warm up, however long it takes you to warm up. Then you're gonna go run in for 20 minutes. After the 20 minutes, you're gonna cool down, check your heart rate on your phone, in that 20 minutes, you want to take your average heart rate, so your average beats per minute. Then you can take 5% off of that, and that will give you an aerobic threshold. So the way to do it is, you want to start off and gradually increase the speed, maybe every five minutes, to you're running at quite an uncomfortable pace. But when the 20 minutes is over, you want to feel like you could have done more. So you don't want to completely burn out, but you don't want to be going too light. So that will give you an aerobic threshold. So the point of finding your anaerobic threshold is so that you know where where you're working at, where it's just the, just before the point where, you, where you're where you going into your ATP system. Because if you're in your ATP system, the point past the anaerobic threshold, you can only hang around in that system for a little bit and you, you, you physically can't function anymore. And that's when you will see people when they can't keep their hands up and they're just firing shots with no snaps in it. And I'm sure anyone who's had a hard spar or the end of the last round, the last 10 seconds, you'll know how that feels where you can't keep your hands up. You don't want to be fighting in that state because you can't do it for very long. You'll do it for like 10 seconds. So maybe the last 10 seconds of every round, you can get away with doing it. But in a fight, you want to know where your anaerobic threshold is so you're not, you're not exceeding that limit. Right, track recovery time. So tracking recovery time, you can do this lots of different ways. The best way I would do it at the moment in lockdown, I would shadow box at a general fight pace, maybe a little bit harder because it's only shadow boxing, it's not too taxing. However long your rounds are, two minutes or three minute rounds, with the heart rate monitor on. When you get to your break, one minute break, check your heart rate and then check how many beats per minute it drops down. For a healthy fit athlete, we want to try and drop down to 40 to 60 beats per minute. This isn't an ideal way to test it, but it's probably the most specific for boxing. Ideally, if we were, if we were out of lockdown, I would do it with two coaches, one of the coaches doing pads, one of them checking the heart rate. And then at the break, the one minute break, the coach with the heart rate monitor checking it. We'll keep an eye on how many beats per minute the athlete's heart drops. And we're there looking for 40 to 60 beats per minute. If your heart rate's dropping down quickly and you're recovering fast, then it obviously means you're fit. And that's gonna cross over into your fights. If you can recover faster than your opponent, you're gonna be fresher in between the rounds and you're gonna be able to throw better quality shots. If your opponent's not as fit as you, then obviously they're gonna be throwing sloppier punches and less work rate. It's gonna look much better for the judges if you're coming out fresh in between rounds and also finishing the fight looking fresh. Also, Keep in mind as well, if, if it's a close bout and they're not sure who to score it with, judges will keep an eye on you afterwards and some of them just score it on who looks better, who looks fresher once the fight's finished. Honestly, for real. Okay, next one, last one. Track calories burnt in a session. I would say in lockdown you probably don't need to do this unless you're already on a calorie deficit already, then you can just add on the calories as long as it stays within your calorie deficit. Most of us probably won't need to track the calories that we're burning at the moment. We're not very active. Well, we shouldn't be because we're stuck inside, eh? Tracking calories that you burnt off in a session is really helpful because you might be eating too little. You might be unnecessarily starving yourself because you're worried about making weight, which I understand, but you might be affecting your training doing that by stressing out. If you're actually looking at your calories and you can tell how many calories you burn and then how many you can replace, then that's gonna help your training and your energy levels a lot more and you're gonna get more out of your training and more out of competition. On the other side of that, you might be eating too many calories I've had a hard long session. I'm gonna go home and smash this. I'm gonna smash that kilogram of pasta or whatever. Heart rate monitors are the best tools you can buy to track your calories that you personally are burning because you put your age in, you put your height in, you put your 
weight in, then it's on your chest. And it's the most effective way that we can, like the general public, can track their heart rates without going to the hospital or to the doctors or in a lab where they test it. So it's worth investing in because you're going to get some good solid data off of it. But, and if you're an athlete, if you're a serious athlete, an amateur athlete or a pro athlete, and it's readily available, and they're not too expensive, about 60 quid, maybe 100 pounds, 65 to 100 pounds, it's, it's definitely worth investing in. And, and you can eat more. Anything, anything that's going to allow you to eat more in boxing, I would always invest in that. Also, remember, your maximum heart rate is to do with your genetics as well. So there's a rule of thumb, I think you take away your age from like 222 or something like that, 220, I can't remember what it is. It gives you a rough guesstimate about what your max heart rate is. Your max heart rate is to do with your genetics. It doesn't make you fitter or less fitter than someone if your max heart rate is this or that. It's to do with your, it's just to do with your genetics. You can't change your max heart rate. However, saying that, you can change your resting heart rate when you get fitter. Your resting heart rate, the lower it is, that's an indication of having a healthy, strong heart, and that's pumping blood with oxygen around the body more efficiently. Okay, so really quick summary, anaerobic threshold testing, run 20 minutes, find the average heart rate beats per minute of that 20 minute run, take 5% off of it, that's your anaerobic threshold in beats per minute. Tracking recovery time, do some sort of training for boxing, I recommend shadow boxing a lockdown, track how many beats per minute your heart goes down, so we're looking at 40 to 60 beats per minute. Tracking calories burnt per session, we don't need to do that probably right now, lockdown, but for when we get back into training at gyms, that would be very beneficial for making weight and maintaining weight. I hope that this has been somewhat useful. I hope that everyone's doing all right in lockdown, and I'll put some more videos up soon. Thank you very much for watching.